you guys. We'll get started in uh, five minutes at the usual time. Two o'clock, East Coast time. Hi to all of you. I guess school is out for the summer now for everybody, I'll bet. So you're running around, having fun, doing stuff. Good, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what summer's for. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> we're gonna have some fun today. Hi, Finley and Fisher in Maryland. And uh, uh, Ian and Erica are here, and Molly in Voorhees, New Jersey. Hi, Bennett, how you doing? Phone home. Sh Srikar in India, hi. Braden and Michaela in Georgia, phone home. Supriya, uh, Evan in Atlanta, hi. Carter, Hudson and Nora in Illinois. Ashlyn in Myrtle Beach. Some of these familiar names. Mark, the Markwood, Markwood crew. I love it when familiar names. Tatiana, hi, nice to see you back. Rhea, Any, anybody new here who's never been here before? Abby and uh, Isabel. Uh, Mallory and Magnolia and Aylin in Mineola. Connor and Aiden in New York. Hi to you guys too. Dolev and his friend Faith. Thank you for joining us, Faith. Samik and Tanya in New Jersey. Uh, Colin and Allison, <clears throat> Abby in uh, South Carolina, hi. Jack and John in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Audrey and Ben, Aubrey and Ben in Florida, and Evan in from Kenilworth, is that New Jersey? Caitlin and uh, Aaron are here, and Grant in Virginia. We'll get started in uh, three minutes. Billy C, Bernard's Church. The Shoemaker Kids from Illinois are here. Uh, Patrick's here. Hi. Annabelle and Claire. Claire. Okay. Theo. Hi. How you doing? Theo. The Glass Gang. Always here. Can count on them. Leo. Just finished Mr. Marty. Thanks for reading it. If you, if you read it and enjoyed it, please leave a, a, a short review on Amazon. That, I really appreciate that. The Searle Squad says hi. <clears throat> Phillips Kids in Alabama. Rhea in Atlanta. Kenneth in Utah. I don't think I have many fans in Utah. Haley and Liliana in California. Uh, Caitlin and Aaron, hi. Vanya, nice to see you again. Uh, Malia in Tennessee. Um, your first time, thank you Malia, thank you. <laughs> Daniel, uh, John V, we got uh, about two minutes to go. Caitlin and Aaron. Uh, Roxanne from Massachusetts. Uh, Philip is here. Uh, Bellin and Sebas, I hope I pronounced that right. Philip, uh, hi to you too, if it's another Philip. Uh, so glad you could all make it today. It looks like a beautiful day here. I hope it's as pretty where you are. Jen and Poughkeepsie. Philip again. I hope it's another Philip. And this is a whole bunch of Philips. Laney and Ben. AJ and Danny in Illinois. Hi, glad you can make it. Phone home. Philip. I'm not going to write Philip anymore. Uh, Noah and Logan in Wisconsin and uh, Troop, uh, the Maslowski kids, always here. Ben and Zoe. <clears throat> Glad you liked Mr. Marty, Gina. Uh, Maddie, Julie, Josh, and Abby in Warren, New Jersey, and Wyatt in New Jersey. We got about one minute to go. Audrey in Toronto, first time. Yay, Audrey. Tell your friends in Canada, join, join us. Matthew and Stephen, Adya, uh, Ha Hannah. And the sun suddenly ducked behind a cloud. Hope you can still see me. Billy Bob, Jack in Michigan, uh, Naomi, and Kiami. Oops, I, it went by too fast. Sorry. Love your books. Thank you. Okay, we got less than a minute to go. We got about a half a minute to go. Oliver, hi. Molly in Evanston, Illinois. Um, hi, Jennifer. And Hannah in Highland Park, Illinois. We got exactly a half a minute to go before we get started at 2 o'clock East Coast time. Still time to tell your friends, tell, tell your cousins, tell whatever. Get over here, Zoe. Paul in Illinois. We got 15 seconds until we get started. Jackson, Tyler in New York, Patrick in Boca, and Evelyn too. Oh, wait, we got ooh, five, four, three, two, one, it's go time, baby. Hi, 
Dan Gutman here. I am the guy who writes the My Weird School series and lots of other books for kids too. Welcome to number 75. This is our 75th read aloud. So we're three quarters of the way to our ultimate goal of 100. Today's Monday and you know what that means. We start a new book today and I thought, you know, we try something different this week, okay? Instead of a regular My Weird School book, I don't know if you guys even know this or not, but there's these My Weird School specials like I did a special about uh, Halloween. Uh, I did a special about uh, Christmas. There's a special book about Valentine's Day. They all have rhyming titles, yes. And uh, Easter, there's an Easter special. And there was uh, the Back to School special. This was the, the only book in the series that is narrated by Andrea instead of AJ. And of course, the summer special, which I might read to you before we finish this whole thing. But today, we're going to read the newest special, which just came out in time for President's Day, and it's called We're Red, Weird, and Blue, What Can We Do? It really came out for President's Day, but I think it's equally applicable for the 4th of July, which is coming up on Saturday. So we're going to read this book this week. It has 11 chapters in it, so we're going to read three of them today, and the rest of the week we'll read two every day and finish the book on Friday, as we always do. Okay. Oh, it's got 11 chapters, plus there's all these uh, puzzles and games at the end. There's like 32 pages of special stuff at the end, too. Okay, so anything else I need to tell you? No, let's get started. Okay, chapter one is titled, A <clears throat> Hundred Days of Misery. You guys ready? Oh, wait, wait, sorry. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> okay, gather around your big screen TV, your laptop, your tablet, whatever it is. Let's go. My name is AJ and I hate February. February is the shortest month of the year and it's also the worst month of the year. Why, you ask? Four reasons. One, it's cold, rainy, and depressing. And here's Jim's picture of AJ walking to school in the rain in February. That's number one. Number two, the hundredth day of the school year is in February. A hundred days. That's almost a million. That's a hundred days of misery, if you ask me. And we have to celebrate it. <laughs> like, like going to school for a hundred days is a good thing. Number three. February is hard to spell because it has an R in the middle of it for no reason. What's up with that? It shouldn't be spelled if you ask me. All right, where are we? Okay. But do you want to know the worst thing about February? I'm not going to tell you. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Number four, President's Day. Ugh. Do you know why I hate President's Day? It's a long story. You better sit down. If you're already sitting down, stand up. It's all because of what happened last President's Day. Or really, what happened just before last President's Day, on Crazy Pet Day. My friend Neil brought in his pet ferret, Mr. Wiggles. That was the day Mr. Mackey, our reading specialist, came into our classroom dressed up like Abraham Lincoln. He told us we had to do an oral report about one of the presidents for President's Day. All the students were going to vote for president of the school. Then our librarian, Mrs. Rupi, came into the classroom, dressed like George Washington. She and Mr. Mackey told us all about the presidents to help us on our reports, even the weird ones like Millard Fillmore, or Fillard Millmore, or Lard Phil Moore Mill, whatever his name was. You're probably wondering what Mr. Wiggles the ferret has to do with President's Day. I'm getting to that. So anyway, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln started insulting each other. Lincoln said he was better than Washington because he's on the $5 bill and Washington is only on the $1 bill. Not only that, but he's bigger. Look at that. Lincoln is bigger. That's not, f that's not fair. Oh, I, di I divest. I diverge. I, I, don't know, I did something. Okay. <clears throat> 
Washington said he was better than Lincoln because the Washington Monument is way taller than the Lincoln Memorial. The two of them started fighting. And here's Jim's picture of Washington and Lincoln fighting. <laughs> After that, we voted to see which president would become president of the school. And do you know who won? I'm not going to tell you. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. It wasn't George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. The winner was Neil's pet ferret. We all voted for him. Yes, Mr. Wiggles was now President Wiggles. That was cool. After that, we had to give our oral reports. Neil was Thomas Jefferson. Ryan was James Garfield. Michael was Herbert Hoover. In the middle of everything, President Wiggles escaped from his cage and disappeared. Everybody was freaking out. It turned out that President Wiggles was hiding in Abraham Lincoln's hat, which happened to be on Emily's head. <laughs> that was weird. I worked really hard on my President's Day oral report. I didn't tell anybody who my president was until the last minute. I wanted it to be a surprise. So I started giving my report about Benjamin Franklin. It was really good, but everybody was looking at me weirdly. Then little Miss Smarty Pants, Andrea Young said, Benjamin Franklin wasn't a president, dumbhead. What? It turned out that Andrea was right. Benjamin Franklin was never president of the United States. I just figured that if he was on the $100 bill, he had to be a president. Why else would they put him on the bill? I spent like a million hundred hours learning everything about Benjamin Franklin. And for what? Nothing. Here's uh, Jim's picture of H.A. <laughs> dressed up like Benjamin Franklin to give his oral report on the presidents, even though Benjamin Franklin wasn't a president. <clears throat> it was the worst day of my life. I was totally humiliated in front of the whole school. I wanted to run away to Antarctica and live with the penguins. I thought I was going to die. So that's why I hate February. All right, that's chapter one. Let's do chapter two, which is titled Big Nose. If I was king of the world, I would change the calendar so it would go straight from January to March. That's right, no more February. But I'm not the king, so of course, February came. We are minding our own business in Mr. Cooper's class, and you'll never believe who ran into the door at that moment. Nobody! Why would somebody run into a door? That would hurt. But you'll never believe who ran into the doorway. It was our principal, Mr. Klutz. Here's uh, Jim's picture of Mr. Klutz running through the doorway. <clears throat> I have big news, he announced. Mr. Klutz has a big nose, I whispered to Michael, who never ties his shoes. Next week, we're going to have a contest for all the third graders, said Mr. Klutz. Ooh, everybody ooed, because contests are cool. It's going to be elementary school against Dirk school, said Mr. Klutz. Ooh, everybody ooed again. Dirk is another school in our town. We call it Dork School. It's for really smart kids. Elementary and Dirk are big rivals. We competed against them in the brain games last year. Remember? And we won. It was the greatest day of my life. The contest is going to be on the Wednesday right after President's Day, Mr. Klutz told us. It's going to be called the President's Day Challenge. Doesn't that sound like fun? Yes, shouted all the girls. No, shouted all the boys. The President's Day Challenge sounded boring to me. It was sure to be one of those educational snooze fest contests where we have to learn stuff and pretend to be having fun. Learning stuff is no fun. If we have to learn stuff, why can't we learn about skateboarding or football? Why can't we have a skateboarding contest or a football game against Dirk School? That would be cool. 
Boo! The guys and me started booing. Wait a minute, said Mr. Klutz. The winning school will get prizes. Ooh, everybody ooed, because winning prizes is cool. And it would be great to beat those dirt dorks again. There will be four prizes, Mr. Klutz told us. The first prize is bragging rights, of course. Bragging rights? Who cares? Grown-ups always say you can win bragging rights. But then, when we actually brag about something, the grown-ups tell us that bragging isn't nice and we should stop doing it. I'm not falling for that again. Boo! The second prize is a year's supply of Porky's Pork Sausages, said Mr. Klutz. I like Porky's Pork Sausages. But every time there's a contest, they give away Porky's Pork Sausages. I bet Mr. Klutz has a secret deal with Peter Porky, the guy who owns Porky's Pork Sausage Company. Boo! I think you'll like this, said Mr. Klutz. The third prize is a trip to Disneyland. Boo, wait, what? Did he just say a trip to Disneyland? And here's Jim's picture of Disneyland. Looks like fun. Disneyland is the coolest place in the history of the world. They've got all kinds of rides there. Some of them not only make you dizzy, they actually make you throw up. And you know a ride is a good one if it can make you throw up. That's the first rule of throwing up. Yay! Everybody was excited that we could beat those dirt dorks and win a trip to Disneyland. What's the fourth prize? Asked Andrea, who has to know everything and win everything. Oh, the fourth prize is a secret, said Mr. Klutz. Ooh, secrets are cool. Prizes are cool. So secret prizes are super cool. All right, that's chapter two. Ready for chapter three? Mrs. Rupee is loopy. Huh, where did I hear that one before? <laughs> All right, okay. All right, so <clears throat> chapter three. I didn't think much about the President's Day challenge until dismissal at three o'clock. The gang and me were about to head home when we saw Andrea and Emily sitting on the front steps of the school. I figured they liked school so much they didn't want to go home. What are you doing here? asked Ryan, who will eat anything, even stuff that isn't food. Emily and I are going to the media center after school today, Andrea said. That's right, said Emily, who always agrees with everything Andrea says. The media center? Ugh, that's a horrible place that used to be called the library, but they changed the name because kids didn't want to go to the library. You want to know why? Because it has lots of books in it. Books are boring. I don't even know why you're reading this one. <clears throat> why are you going to the media center, asked Alexia who rides a skateboard all the time. Mrs. Ruby said she'd help us learn all about the presidents, Andrea told us. The kids who know the most will get to be in the President's Day Challenge. So we can win a trip to Disneyland, added Emily. Wait, only a few kids get to go to Disneyland? I thought all of us would get to go. It wasn't fair. Well, I wasn't gonna let Andrea win the trip to Disneyland. When she got up to go to the media center, so did I. And so did Ryan, Neil, Michael, and Alexia. It's not like we had anything better to do after school anyway. When we got to the media center, our media specialist, Mrs. Rupi, was waiting for us. But she didn't look like Mrs. Rupi. She's always dressing up like other people. One time she was Little Bo Peep. That was weird. Miss Rupi is loopy. This time, she was dressed up like some old guy with dark hair and a dark suit and tie. Here's uh, <clears throat> Jim's picture of Mrs. Rupi dressed up as some old guy. Hmm, wonder who it is. <clears throat> and who are you today, Mrs. Rupi? asked Andrea. 
Rupee, said Mrs. Rupee in a low voice. Never heard of her. My name is Ronald Reagan. I was the 40th president. Before I was president, I was a movie star. In one movie, my co-star was a chimpanzee. The movie was called Bedtime for Bonzo. So if they ask us which president acted in a movie with a chimp, we'll remember Ronald Reagan, said Andrea. See, see, said Mrs. Rupee, you learned something about a president already. Ronald Rupee Reagan showed us a bunch of books about the presidents. Then he said we could use the computers to look up more stuff. Andrew and Emily rushed to the computer stations. I love looking up, stu up things online, said Andrea. Me too, said Emily. Ooh, did you know that four of our presidents were born in February? Asked Andrea. Washington, Lincoln, Reagan, and William Henry Harrison. Andrea thinks she is so smart because she's a member of PAC. That stands for the Principal Advisory Committee, a group of nerds who get to boss around the principal. Looking up stuff about the presidents was boring. I decided to make an airplane out of a sheet of paper Mrs. Rupee, I mean Ronald Reagan, gave us. I let it fly and it almost hit Andrea in the back of her head. Here's, here's AJ making paper airplanes when he's supposed to be looking stuff up online to learn about the presidents. Arlo, Andrea yelled. She calls me by my real name because she knows I don't like it. If you were smart, instead of making paper airplanes, you would be looking to see who was the first president to fly in a plane. They're never going to ask a dumb question like that, I replied. Maybe not, Andrea said, but you never know when it might come in handy. That's why I'm going to get... That's why I'm going to get into Harvard someday. The more I read, the more I know. And the more I know, the smarter I am. And the smarter I am, the more likely I'll go to Harvard and get a good job and be successful in life. Ugh, why can't a truck full of Harvards fall on Andrea's head? You probably don't know anything about the president's Arlo, Andrea told me. Oh yeah, I said. It just so happens that I know lots of stuff about the presidents. I know stuff that nobody else knows. Like what? scoffed Andrea. The first flush toilet in the White House was installed in 1853 by Millard Fillmore, I told her. I guess before that, the presidents just went in a hole in the ground. How do you know that? everybody asked. I also know that George H.W. Bush was the only president to ever throw up on somebody, I said. Here's a picture of President Bush throwing up on somebody. That's true. It actually happened. How do you know that? Everybody asked. I just happen to know a lot of stuff about toilets and puking, okay? I told them. It's my jam. We stayed at the library looking up stuff for a million hundred hours until our parents came to pick us up. It's maybe it was an ambulance that came to pick us up. What a snooze fest. Andrea is sure to win the trip to Disneyland. Her parents hire private tutors to teach her everything. If they had tutors, they would teach you how to clip your toenails. Andrea's parents would hire them so Andrea would get better at it. But I don't think clipping your toenails will get you into Harvard. All right, that's chapter three. Tomorrow we're going to continue with chapter four, a piece of cake. But first, before we go, how about our joke of the day? You ready for our joke of the day? Okay. This joke is from Andrew, somebody named Andrew in, who lives in Brooklyn, New York, and he specifically told me that I'm supposed to read this joke with a thick southern accent. I don't know if I could do that, but I'll try. All right, here's the joke. <clears throat> How is my hand like a lemon pie? <laughs> huh? Do you know? Give up? How is my hand like a lemon pie? It has meringue on it. Get it? Meringue? <laughs> All right. You can blame that one on Andrew. Okay. 
Get off, stop staring at screens. Get off the couch. It's time to thank Ryan Cunningham and Josh Salzman for our theme song. You know it. You love it. We all love it. Let's do it, okay? And man, oh man, is that man nuts! Okay, you guys, see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Until then, read like crazy, wash your hands like crazy. Bye now.